Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today, we continue reading through the SF Masterworks. Eric Frank Russell, Wasp, from 1957. From the back of the book. The war had been going on for nearly a year, and Earth needed an edge. Which was where James Mowry came in. If a wasp buzzing around in a car could distract the driver enough to cause him to crash, what havoc could one elite operative wreak on an unsuspecting enemy? Intensely trained, his appearance surgically altered, Maori is landed deep in enemy territory. His mission is simple. Sap morale. Tie up resources. Cause mayhem. In short, be a wasp. The introduction to this book is by Lisa Tuttle. She says, With his laconic, hard-boiled style and regular appearances in the pulp magazines edited by John W. Campbell, Eric Frank Russell was assumed by many readers to be an American writer, but in fact, he was thoroughly British. Born into a military family in 1905, he spent his youth in England, Egypt, and the Sudan. During the Second World War, he served in the RAF, and worked as an engineer before becoming a full-time writer. His strong scientific interests led him to science fiction, of which he was soon an active fan. Along with Arthur C. Clarke and Ted Carnell, Russell was one of the original members of the British Interplanetary Society formed in 1933, and went to the first ever science fiction convention at the Theosophical Hall in Leeds on 3 January 1937. This one-day event was attended by about 20 people and also received messages of support and encouragement from such luminaries as H.G. Wells, Olaf Stapledon, John Russell Fern, and Festus Pragnell. I don't think I've ever heard of Fern and Pragnell. If you know something about these writers, why don't you comment below? As with so many SF novels from the 1950s, the current history of World War II and its aftermath plays strongly in this novel. This is a spy novel, a novel of terrorism and insurrection. In recruiting James Mowry for a secret mission, an example is given of a wasp, hence the name Wasp. The third report detailed an automobile accident. Three killed, one seriously injured, the car a complete wreck. The sole survivor had died nine hours later. Maori handed back the papers. What's all this to me? Further down, it's explained to him. Finally, let's consider this auto smash-up. The survivor was able to tell us the cause before he died. He said the driver lost control at high speed while swiping at a wasp, which had flown in through a window and was buzzing around his face. It nearly happened to me once. Ignoring that, Wolf said, the weight of a wasp is under half an ounce. Compared with a human being, the wasp's size is minute, its strength negligible, its sole armament is a tiny syringe holding a drop of irritant formic acid. In this instance, the wasp didn't use it. Nevertheless, that wasp killed four big men and converted a large, powerful car into a heap of scrap. I see the point, but where do I come in? Right here, said Wolf. We want you to become a wasp. This novel gets straight to the point. That's in chapter one. From here, Maori is implanted in a Syrian world. The Syrians are from Sirius, and they are at war with Earth. Will Maori be that wasp which can make a difference in the war? This novel is all about ingenuity and close escapes. It's a thriller with tense moments. In some ways, this could have been a novel written about World War II. The science fiction dressing of the worlds allows the author to say some things perhaps he couldn't say in a World War II novel. There is also some ingenious use of technology. This is not a character-driven novel. This is simply a thriller. It's a simple, fun read, clocking in at 180 pages. I give Wasp 7 out of 10. I will be returning to Eric Frank Russell's work in the Best Of series from Ballantyne Classic Library of Science Fiction. The Best of Eric Frank Russell. So have you read the work of Eric Frank Russell? What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.